We're now going to talk about spinal cord white matter, and our objectives are, one, describe spinal cord white matter by answering these questions. What's the function of spinal cord white matter in? What is a tract? What are the primary white matter tracts in the spinal cord? And our second objective is to compare and contrast cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral spinal cord segments. I'll answer the questions, what features distinguish the spinal cord segments from each other? Okay, so... What is the function of spinal cord white matter? Well, here we have a flame, and if you touch that flame, you're like, ouch, and you're going to pull your finger away. But how do we get that information to your brain to let your brain know to tell you to move your finger away? And also, how does your brain then tell your finger and how to get your finger to touch the play button on your DVD player? <clears throat> the answer, spinal cord white matter. What is a tract? Well, to understand what a tract is, we need to take a look at where we see the spinal cord. Spinal cord white matter surrounds the gray matter. So there's white matter, and it's surrounding the gray matter. It looks like a butterfly in the middle of a spinal cord. White matter surrounds the periphery, and it consists of tracts of axons. And so these axons go up and down the spinal cord, much like cables in an elevator. And so ascending axons that are bringing information such as pain, temperature, and touch will ascend and go up these and the white matter going to the brain to tell the brain information. And it's white because these long axons are myelinated by those oligodendrocytes. The brain is then going to send information down um, or descending axonal pathways that are be going to uh, the ventral horn gray matter to tell your skeletal muscles to contract. So white matter is consistent of these tracts of axons. So that's how when you touch a flame, information goes not only in through the dorsal root of the uh, spinal nerves, but gets up to the brain. And that's how your brain then sends information down in these descending axons to tell your ventral horn cells to send a lower motor neuron to press play on the DVD player. So spinal cord white matter consists of tracts of axons. Now, what does that mean? Well, to do that, let's take a look at the very bottom. We see a sensory neuron that just entered in the dorsal root. You see the dorsal root ganglion into the white matter, and I've got part of the white matter highlighted in blue. Now, that information then ascends all the way up to go to the brain. There's a lumbar segment. Pardon me, a sacral segment. Now let's take a look at a lumbar segment. Same thing. Information comes in and ascends all the way up to the brain. Take a look at the thoracic segment, to ascends up to the brain, and the cervical segment ascends up to the brain. Therefore, sensory information enters each segmental level of the spinal cord and then ascends to the brain via the white matter. That sensory information ascends to the brain in tracts of white matter. Now watch what happens. White matter increases as we ascend up this spinal cord more and more white matter. And because of all that white matter, take a look. And so there's a little bit at the bottom, a little bit more in the lumbar, a lot more in the thoracic, and then tons in the cervical region. The take-home message, white matter increases as we ascend the spinal cord. Now, spinal cord white matter consists of tracts of axons, but some of these are descending. So, for example, there we have a descending... Uh, a uh, neuron that comes down that synapses in a ventral horn cell and then the lower motor neuron axon courses out. And then we have the same thing happen in the lumbar level. The information goes out and the same thing happens in the thoracic level and the same thing happens in a cervical level. So therefore, information from the brain descends in white matter tracts to each segmental spinal cord level. Now, White matter decreases now as we descend because as we go down, you'll notice that at each segmental level, when information ends at each segmental level, there's fewer descending fiber tracts until we get to the sacral region. Let's take a look at each level. There's fewer and fewer until finally in the sacral level, there's very few descending neurons. So the take-home message, white matter decreases as we descend the spinal cord. What are the primary white matter tracts? To answer this one, there's a picture of a bus in New York. And I remember my wife and I went for an anniversary to New York, and we took one of these buses. And one of these buses took us right by Central Park. And in Central Park, they started, we were driving by, and they're saying, oh, this is the areas of Central Park, and you see, and they, ta and they talked all about it. And at one point, the guide said, oh, look ahead. 
hey, take a look, you can see the Empire State Building, and talked about it for a bit, but then said, don't worry, we're going to talk more about it later. We're just letting you see it and giving you a heads up and telling you a little bit about it. I'm doing the same thing now in the sense that I'm telling you about white matter of the spinal cord, but I'm going to now just take a minute to tell you about some things that future lecturers are going to cover with regards to specifics of spinal cord white matter. So, for example, we have all of these blue, green, and red specific tracks of white matter that ascend or descend that have strong clinical significance, especially when it comes to the boards. Um, in blue, we call this the dorsal column or posterior column because it is a group of white matter between, two, between um, the, the posterior horns of the gray matter. And it is going to then carry ascending ipsilateral sensory tracts for fine touch, proprioception, and vibration. So there we've got all this information coming in at each segmental level and ascends up. And, and it says ipsilateral because that information is traveling up the same side. So proprioception and vibration and fine or light touch, or fine touch, that information ascends on the same side um, that it entered the spinal cord. The next is called the anterior lateral system, sometimes called the spinothalamic tract. This one is then going to take ascending information, but contralateral sensory tracts for pain, temperature, and touch. And so if we take a look at this one level, there's a sensory neuron that comes in and synapses of the sensory neuron in the dorsal horn, and that axon decussates to the contralateral side and ascends up a tract. And we see this happens at each of the segmental levels of the spinal cord. And so what happens then is this information of pain, temperature, touch that we see in these tracts of spinal cord are actually taking information from the opposite side of the body. And then our corticospinal tract. This is taking information uh, descending ipsilateral motor tracts en route to the ventral horn gray matter. And so there we've got the information coming down and making a synapse on that same side. And so there we have our dorsal column, anterior lateral system, and cortical spinal tract that you're going to get into more detail in future lectures. All right, now what features distinguish cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral spinal cord segments from each other? All right, distinguishing spinal cord levels and cross-section. Let's take each section uh, one by one. First, our cervical spinal cord it is wide and flat. It has lots and lots of white matter and has a really big ventral horn enlargement because of the um, uh, lower motor neurons going to the muscles of the upper limb, especially the hand. Our thoracic spinal cord has very small ventral horns because it's just going to intercostal muscles and some body wall muscles, but it's also the only one that has a lateral horn. Uh, recognize that there's still a quite a bit of white matter from all the f ascending and descending tracks in that area. Now, the lumbar spinal cord has these really large ventral horns, and it's really round in shape. And finally, our sacral spinal cord has a large ventral horn, the least amount of white matter, and it's also the smallest section of the spinal cord because of how little white matter there is. All right, so in review... Spinal cord white matter surrounds the gray matter in the spinal cord. Spinal cord white matter consists of millions of ascending and descending fibers organized into spinal tracts. Ascending tracts relay information from each segmental spinal cord level to the brain, and descending tracts relay information from the brain to each segmental spinal cord level. And cross-sectional segments of the spinal cord can be distinguished by the gray and white matter arrangements. Thank you.